Hi everybody, this is Andrew here for Tutorial Soup. Um, in the last tutorial, we um, set up a framework um, for creating a better kind of layout for our um, for our code. Um, we created an init um, function, a start game function, and an animate function. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a star background, um, which is pretty cool. Um, by that I mean uh, we're going to have stars going from the right hand side of the screen um, over to the left of the screen. Um, this is going to be the background for our space game which we're going to create, um, uh, which eventually we'll put enemies and uh, other things on the screen, but for now we're just going to create the stars. Now in the last tutorial we made a, a fairly small rectangle um, go from right to left. Um, I mean, there's a kind of theme going here with rectangles. I, I think you may, you may have noticed, but um, <laughs> I'm promised this is going to get more exciting. It definitely will get exciting at some point. Um, like now, right? If I, I'm sorry, guys. It's quite late, and I think I'm um, a little bit tired. So excuse me for my bad humour, if you can call it that. Um, so for starters, I actually noticed something I did wrong on the last tutorial, and that's for when we clear the um, canvas, um, I put it within the for loop here. It actually needs to be just before this, uh, just before this for loop there. Um, Basically, if we left the canvas clear, um, canvas clear um, context clear rectangle here, then it would clear each time this looped around, which is not what we want to do. We want it, we want it to clear each time, um, each 33 milliseconds. We don't want it to clear every time it loops through this um, through this for loop. So we need to just take that out there and put it there. So, at the moment, as I say, as I say, we've just got a small little rectangle. We it'd actually be better, be better if we could create a few more rectangles um, randomly about the screen. Um, now, if we try to do this now by changing the amount of shapes on the screen, um, this for loop here will populate. Um, the shapes are over four objects, um, but it won't actually display, uh, display them. Um, it's kind of displaying them all in one place. So, in order to create um, random positions for each of the shapes or stars, as they're going to be, um, as they are soon going to be, um, we need to use the function math.random function. Now, this is essential this uh, for creating randomness, um, whether it be enemies or um, different th different objects on the screen. It will it'll just create random positions for them um, on the X and the Y, uh, or anything. I mean, you can use it the random function for any anything you want, really. So, I'm going to put canvas width here, so it's going to be. A random location um, within the width of the canvas, and for this, you might have guessed, is going to be a, um, a random number. I don't want to put a capital in there, do I? Um, and it's going to be a random uh, number between zero and the height, the canvas height. So, if we refresh this. Absolutely nothing happened. Um, okay, it's a simple thing. I put in a capital A here when I just wanted a lowercase a. It's a simple, simple error. You'll you'll find that a lot of the errors um, when you're programming are going to be simple mistakes like that. So if I refresh it now, you will now see there's four random rectangles. If I refresh each time, they will show up in a different random place. Um, 
to basically each time each time the um, object's being created, it's, um, it's give, been giving a random um, value in each of the x and y coordinates. So um, essentially, it's drawing them all in different positions. Now, now what we would ideally like to happen is when this block goes off the screen here we would actually we want to kind of recycle it and make it look like um, there's more of them so even though there's four stars here now we can rather than drawing loads and loads continuously we can recycle them so when they go off screen we can then reposition them this side of the screen and then they will come back on again uh, this is this is quite good for kind of you know just conserving uh, the CPU and kind of um, reusing um, reusing the objects. So to do this, we I come down to here. Just gonna move this window a little bit. So I'm gonna put it here. So we're gonna write. An if statement. Um, so the condition within the parentheses is going to be if temp shape dot x plus temp shape dot width is less than zero. So if temp shape x um, which is the x coordinate plus the temp shape width, which is the width of the shape, is less than zero. Um, basically, if the x coordinate reaches zero, uh, which is going to be here, and the reason why I put the temp shape width as well, it's it, so that it, so that the whole object moves off the screen before it comes back over this side. If we were just to put temp shape x, it would get to the end here, and then suddenly disappear, and then start here. But we want it to to get to here, and then for the whole of the shape to move off the side before it then respawns this side. So now, now we set that um, condition. In fact, I'm just going to indent this. Now. We're going to put temp shape dot x. Again, this is going to be similar to um, what we wrote here. Um, only, only I'm actually referencing the temp shape um, variable. Um, so temp shape equals canvas width. I'm going to put plus 100. Let's so that it's um, if I were just to put the canvas width again, it would just start here. But if I put the canvas width plus 100, it's going to start off here. It's going to go off the screen by 100. Um, and now if I put temp shape dot y equals, I still want this to be math random so that it can appear um, a, um, a random location of, the, of um, the height of the screen, so it could be anywhere here. So I want math dot dot random and canvas height and I'm gonna set ten sorry temp shape dot the x velocity x on the um, velocity on the x axis I'm going to equal minus one again as it is at the top. Um, but what I think I'm going to do just to speed things up, save for wait, waiting for, I'm going to speed up the um, shape so that it doesn't take so long for it to reach the end of the screen. So as it goes off one side, you'll notice that it comes back on the other side. The reason why there's a small delay is because it's um, they're respawning a hundred um, off the width of the um, canvas, so there's a slight delay. But as you can see, that's pretty cool. That's a cool little um, moving object effect, um, randomly positioning them 
um, in different locations. Now, these don't really look too much like stars. Um, so, what I want to do is I'm going to keep the speed as it is. I'm going to reduce the size to 10, the width and height to 10. So when it's creating the shapes, it's going to give them width and height of 10. And I'm also going to increase the number of shapes to 40 rather than 4. Now if I refresh the screen, they look a little bit more like stars, but I'm actually going to make them a little bit smaller, so I'll say 5. There we go. And that looks pretty cool. Um, now, obviously this is a complete... Um, the polar opposite of what it should be. I need to have white stars on a black background. So this, um, I don't have to do this in JavaScript. I can simply open up the um, CSS. So if I find the folder. So the CSS file we created in an early tutorial. Um, we can go to. So what I want to do is just make the background black so rather than um, hash zero, uh, rather than hash FFF it's going to be hash 000 which is um, a hexadecimal um, shortcut for um, the black color so now if I go back over background is black but I need to create make the um, I need to create the make the shapes uh, white so in order to do that I need to set a style so context dot fill style equals RGB red green and blue um, so I need to put two Five five, two five five, two five five. This makes uh, this means um, the lightest red, the lightest green, the lightest blue. Um, I think, um, and that should make the stars white. There we go. And there's our cool space background. Um, so. That's pretty cool. So that's that's already looking like a you know almost like a game. Uh, now all we need is like a ship and um, a few event listeners, and then eventually we can create a few enemies. That's pretty cool. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial more than the other ones, um, and hopefully they're going to get a little bit better as we go along. Um, thanks very much, and see you in the next tutorial.